they promised an electric revolution, but no one expected it to start with salt and water. Yes, while the world is still in its infancy in the challenge of producing batteries at scale, Tesla is about to manufacture nothing less than 536 cells per second by 2026. This is not hype. It is a real plan, technically detailed and already underway. The heart of this operation is in Corpus Christi, Texas, where the combination of a new low-waste lithium refining process and the application of state-of-the-art dry electrodesis creating a production line that looks more like a chip factory than an automotive plant. Only instead of bits and bytes, we're talking about real energy, which powers cars and redefines the concept of scale. The method used in the refinery replaces heavy acids with a mixture of table salt and water, creating a clean and surprisingly efficient chemical reaction. It's not only more sustainable, it's cheaper, safer, and much faster. This innovation eliminated entire steps in the traditional process, and now the refined lithium that comes out of it arrives ready for the new 4680 Gen 2 battery assembly lines. The time savings are significant, but the impact goes further. It reduces environmental risks and drastically cuts the cost per cell, which should be a game changer for the brand's popular models. But it's not just the raw material that's changed. Cell design is evolving too. The new outer cover of 4680 cells, it's become lighter and more efficient. This means that, in addition to speeding up the assembly process, each final cell requires less material to encapsulate, reducing the battery's overall weight and improving vehicle performance. Tesla is using real-time sensors to monitor temperature, pressure, and density during production, automatically adjusting each step. It's a living, almost organic system that self-regulates to maintain quality without waste. Every second counts, and every second delivers half a thousand road-ready cells. Inside these cells, the secret is in Thedri electrodes, a technology that for years seemed unfeasible. Previously, the process required toxic liquids and long drying times, but now the electrodes are produced with very thin layers of active material applied directly over the conductive metal. This drastically reduced manufacturing time and increased cell durability. Tesla struggled with yield bottlenecks for years, but finally achieved uniform coverage on a large scale, something even its most advanced competitors hadn't achieved. This breakthrough took the 4680 from the realm of mere promise to the forefront of industrial production. The Corpus Christi plan was designed as a continuous assembly line, where each step connects directly to the next, without pauses. This eliminates downtime and allows for a nearly uninterrupted production flow. The model is very reminiscent of the semiconductor industry's fab lines, and not by chance. Tesla wants battery manufacturing to reach the same level of precision and scalability that has made processors dominate the digital world. And if it can maintain this cadence, the goal of supply up to 1 million vehicles per year with batteries produced there, it no longer seems so absurd. While most electric car manufacturers still rely on third parties to assemble cell packs, Tesla is bringing everything under one roof. Extraction, refining, design, assembly, and testing. This isn't just an efficiency strategy, it's a hedge against supply crises. And in a world where lithium has become white gold, having autonomy over its own refining and production could be the difference between leading the market and falling behind. The plan is simple in theory, but monstrous in execution. Control everything, accelerate everything, deliver everything, and fast. But this production speed also brings new challenges. How to maintain quality at such a high rate? How to ensure that each cell meets safety standards without compromising flow? To achieve this, Tesla is using artificial intelligence embedded in the process, which analyzes hundreds of data points per second and automatically intervenes if a deviation is detected. While previously it was necessary to shut down the entire line to correct a fault, the system now corrects in real time like an industrial autopilot. 
This not only increases battery reliability, but also reduces rework and disposal costs. The most impressive thing is that all of this is still in its early stages. The Corpus Christi line is still being expanded, and 536 cells per second is just the first goal. With planned upgrades and continued process optimization, that number could increase even further. Tesla isn't just making batteries. It's building a new way of manufacturing them. And when you look at what this represents in terms of scale, environmental impact, cost, and speed, it's clear that the so-called silent revolution has already begun. Only instead of making noise, it goes tick, 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 536 times per second. The journey to the 4680 cell was anything but simple. Before it, Tesla had already experimented with two generations of cylindrical batteries. The 18650, used in the first Model S and X, and the 2170, which marked a turning point with the Model 3 and Y. These cells brought significant gains in energy density and assembly efficiency, but were still constrained by structural limitations. The 4680 arrived to break these limits. With a tabless design, known as tabless, it allows for more fluid current flow and reduces internal resistance, meaning faster charging, less heat, and longer life. However, despite its promise, it brought a new dilemma. How to produce this on an industrial scale? The answer came in parts. First, Tesla needed to solve the challenge of manufacturing dry electrodes, which had enormous potential but were constantly hampered by technical bottlenecks. Applying the active material to the conductor was unstable and caused massive losses. But the 4680 team, after years of tweaking, finally stabilized the process, ensuring uniform coverage and acceptable yield. It was a game changer. With this hurdle overcome, the 4680 cell went from being just a stage innovation to powering real cars. It is this cell that will make the infamous Tesla possible. Eki Thousand Dollars, a promise repeated by Elon Musk, and which now has a real technical foundation. Meanwhile, Tesla didn't stop at the cell. The company began expanding its energy ecosystem with power walls and megapacks, home and utility scale storage solutions that also rely on the same 4680 cells. This move transformed Tesla from an automaker into an energy supplier with a much broader vertical. Every home equipped with a power wall, every substation with a megapack, connects to the same logic. Reduce costs per cell, improve energy density, and standardize the process. The 4680 cell has become Tesla's universal building block, serving both for powering cars and stabilizing entire power grids. But Tesla also knows that relying on a single technology is risky. That's why the company continues to look for promising alternatives. One of them is solid-state battery, which is still in the experimental phase, but promises superior energy density, greater safety, and ultra-fast charging times. Another is the consolidation of LFP, lithium iron phosphate batteries, which, despite their lower density, offer incredible longevity, lower cost, and are ideal for entry-level models or urban vehicles. In some markets, such as China, Tesla is already using these cells on a large scale, especially for the Model 3 and Model Y. LFPs have gained traction not only for their lower cost, but also for their thermal stability. They're less prone to overheating and fire. And with recent advances, the range gap between them and traditional NMC nickel-manganese-cobalt batteries has narrowed. This gives Tesla an important strategic advantage. Using premium cells in high-performance models and LFP cells in mainstream models, keeping production at a rapid pace without compromising quality or safety. This flexibility in cell composition is one of the keys to expanding the global electric fleet without hitting supply chain limits. In parallel, Tesla began adapting its production to respond quickly to market changes. Need more entry-level model-wise? Increase LFP production. Increased demand for Cybertrucks? Reroute another 4680. 
This flexibility is only possible because the company has internally developed its platforms, production lines, and even the software that controls each phase of manufacturing. It's no exaggeration to say that, while competitors still rely on third-party suppliers, Tesla writes its own production manual in real time and can change it at any time. But not everything was perfect along the way. The 4680 faced serious delays in its early years, especially during the testing and validation phases. Some of the first units performed below expectations, and issues like seal failures or premature degradation caused vehicle delivery delays. Even so, Tesla preferred to fine-tune every detail internally rather than rely on external solutions. It was a calculated risk, delaying the schedule but maintaining full control. Today, with production already accelerating and initial issues resolved, the gamble is beginning to pay off and putting pressure on the competition. The curious thing is that, at the same time that the 4680 consolidates itself as Tesla's technical standard, it continues to evolve. Engineers are already working on new variations of the cell, with improvements in chemical composition, thermal stability, and even hybrid solutions that combine characteristics of different battery types. Tesla wants each iteration of the 4680 to be better than the last, not just cheaper, but also more durable, lighter, and more adaptable. And this process of continuous improvement happens as millions of units roll off the production line. A veritable real-time innovation factory, where the next step is already being tested before the current one even hits the streets. If the 4680 became the backbone of Tesla's global expansion, it also paved the way for the company's total energy autonomy. And this autonomy isn't limited to the cell itself. It will extend to raw materials, transportation, assembly, and even recycling systems. And the first concrete sign of this energy independence is beginning to take shape in Texas, in a facility that goes far beyond a simple refinery. When Tesla decided to build its own lithium refinery in Robstown, Texas, many were skeptical. After all, we're talking about an electric car company that decided to dive headfirst into the mining and chemical processing industry something completely outside the comfort zone of any automaker. But for Elon Musk, relying on suppliers in a volatile market like raw materials was simply unacceptable. The strategy was clear. Ensure full control over lithium, the blood of modern batteries. And the first sample of refined spodumina, produced just 18 months after construction began, proved they weren't bluffing. The plant is designed to produce up to 50 gigawatt hours of lithium per year, enough volume to power over a million vehicles. But what's truly impressive is the speed with which the facility evolved. In record time, Tesla built foundations and substations, installed rotary kilns, and began commissioning the production lines. While traditional companies take years just to obtain permits, Tesla did it all in less than two. Furthermore, the plant adopted clean processes, replacing harsh acids with a salt and water technique that reduces waste and environmental impact. This technical detail may seem small, but it has a huge impact on the scalability of the operation. But Tesla's autonomy isn't limited to refining. The company is also implementing internal processes to separate the positive and negative electrodes, assemble the cells, and transform them directly into ready-to-use battery packs. And here comes another technical difference. Technologia Cell to Pack, which eliminates the intermediate module stage. This means less material, less weight, and more usable space inside the vehicle, not to mention energy efficiency and cost reduction. This lean approach to assembly is becoming standard within the company, and puts Tesla one step ahead in density per volume. Even with its own structure consolidating, Tesla still maintains strategic partnerships with major players in the industry. Companies like Panasonic, LG Energy Solutions, and KTL continue to supply cells, primarily to the Shanghai and Berlin factories. This combination of independence and collaboration gives Tesla the flexibility to adjust its production according to regional demand 
and potential supply bottlenecks. But among all the partnerships, one stands out, the collaboration with World, China's largest battery manufacturer, and at the same time, a direct competitor in the electric vehicle market. BYD supplies Tesla with its Blade batteries, an innovation based on LFP technology that has gained notoriety for its thermal safety and space-efficient use. These cells are longer, thinner, and can be mounted directly to the vehicle's chassis, reducing complexity and improving structural efficiency. Giga Berlin already uses these batteries in part of its production, and this coexistence among rivals demonstrates Tesla's pragmatism. If the solution is good, it doesn't matter where it comes from. And in this case, BYD's blade technology has proven itself to be efficient by European standards. The relationship with BYD is a reflection of a larger picture in the automotive industry. Where competition and cooperation go hand in hand, Apple, for example, buys displays from Samsung, its main smartphone rival. Tesla follows this logic. It doesn't matter who the partner is, as long as they bring performance, scale, and reliability. BYD's LFP may have lower cell density than NMC, but its longevity and lower cost make up for it. And for Tesla's entry-level models, especially those sold in China, this technology fits perfectly, helping to maintain competitive pricing without sacrificing quality. In the United States, Tesla also tested the use of LFPs in entry-level models, but faced some logistical challenges. The supply chain for these batteries is still heavily concentrated in Asia, which limits delivery flexibility within the United States. Even so, the company continues to seek to diversify its supplier base and domesticate its production as much as possible, aligning itself with policies that encourage local production of batteries and critical materials. The idea is clear. The more control Tesla has over the entire process, from soil to car, the less vulnerable it will be to international crises. But while all this is happening, Tesla is also investing heavily in continuous advancement of its own technologies. Since acquiring Maxwell Technologies, the company has made significant strides in dry electrodes and has been steadily refining the production of the 4680. With each new quarter, small improvements emerge, whether in manufacturing speed, chemical consistency, or thermal stability. And even with all this progress, Tesla still maintains contracts with other companies such as Samsung SDI and EVE Energy, ensuring multiple supply channels and avoiding critical dependency. Ultimately, this energy independence strategy isn't just a market response, it's a paradigm shift. Tesla is trying to do what no other automaker has dared, own your own battery chain from start to finish. It's not just about efficiency or cost reduction, but about something deeper, ensuring predictability, stability, and total autonomy in a sector that's on its way to becoming the backbone of the new automotive era. And as production grows and technology evolves, this verticalized approach begins to bear fruit with greater scale, less risk, and an industrial freedom that few competitors can match. With production ramping up, a new problem began to loom on Tesla's horizon the sheer volume of cells needed to sustain its expansion. By 2024, with more than 1.78 million vehicles delivered, the total demand for battery cells reached close to 7 billion units, and that's just considering cars. If we add energy storage systems like power walls and mega packs, that number could easily surpass 10 billion. We're talking about such a large amount that even small improvements in the manufacturing process represent billions in savings.